So many of you know Dog the Bounty Hunter has now joined the hunt for Brian Laundry. Here's what he had to say before I show you some of the reactions from some people on the internet, including our favorite journalist without a crystal ball. Because I lost a daughter at about the same age, that's, I know what the parents feel like. You know, the strongest lead I see is that one of her friends said he had been in the Appalachian Mountains by himself for a couple months. So after Dog showed up on the case, the drama started and people started to take attacks at him and shots at him. He showed up to Brian Laundrie's home. The mother of Brian Laundrie called 911 on Dog when she wouldn't call 911 on Gabby Petito going missing. So the reason I went to Mr. Landry is because I carry a reputation with me. The reputation is he gives you a second chance. He gonna get you, but he gives you a second chance. But that's not the only reputation that Dog the Bounty Hunter carries with him. So let's look at Dog's reputation and see where this all comes from, at least recently. And as an example, we'll look at one of our favorite journalists on the internet. KJP says, is Fox News trying to turn Gabby Petito's passing into a reality show? Did they bring Dog into the hunt? If that is the case, it feels so exploitative. I don't care if he's experienced. This is being turned into a circus. Like always, she seems to be going the negative path and right after she attacks dog by sharing this statement from one of dog's children this is the daughter of dog's late wife beth chapman and of course there's family drama to break down now that dog's wife's passed away he's remarrying and dog's children from beth's marriage his previous wife had some things to say about him essentially they say he's racist and he's a bad guy and then he's into wild theories. So I went to find what Dog's reaction was to that so I could figure out, is this some kind of um, attack? I have never been a racist. This morning, Bonnie reached out to me after watching Dog deny all of the allegations during our broadcast yesterday. Did you cheat on Beth? No. Will you use the N word? Yes, sir. Why were you using that word so freely? Well, I thought I had a pass in the black tribe to use it, kind of like Eminem. Would I die for a gay man or a black man? I'd lay down my life. Bonnie called me and apologized for her father's comments, saying she was, quote, disturbed by what he had to say. I kind of find that interesting that she found out that he did an interview after she attacked him, and then she called to, you know, act disturbed. Bonnie won't even take their calls. A week before our wedding, now that this what malicious attack is now all of a sudden just coming out. And for six months, we've been trying to reach out to her and she won't respond. So what is my take on the dog drama with the Gabby Petito case? We hear that the same family members, the children that were spreading these this information about dog now have been reaching out wanting to go to the wedding. Why would you reach out and want to go to the wedding if he's such a bad guy? Either way, I think it's good to have Dog on the hunt. And our favorite journalist without a crystal ball all of a sudden feels the same way once she gets backlash from the community. Take a look. So Katie has been covering this a lot lately and really not getting much of a response. That is until she shares 911 audio, Brian Laundrie's mother calling 911 on Dog the Bounty Hunter being out front of the home. And if you listen to this audio, it's not shocking. It's nothing. I have no clue why Katie shared this and clickbaited it out like she has, but I have to criticize her now. Why does she use such rampant clickbait? You know what? Let me play the 911 audio that she found for you, and you make up your mind on whether you feel that it's so shocking. Caught on a police scanner, which we obtained through Broadcastify's archives. There was a call made right when he was at the door and the dispatcher said that there was someone yelling and screaming outside of the home and then he went into the street, which is exactly what happened. Then a follow-up call discussed how Roberta at the home of that call had contacted about a man outside of their home. On William 3 reference a male outside yelling and screaming in the street while on the line with a complainant. The male stopped screaming, but he's somewhere in the area. I don't know, 97, 1024. 104 to 714, the female Roberta from that 1020 called it on 911. Uh, what's that? Whenever 10 North, I was laying on, what was that traffic? We just had the female from that 1020 call in on 911, reference the situation with the male. Yeah, it's, um, 
once you arrive or if you're already there and the occupants are requesting us to come up just go ahead and go to the house and assist and just to keep the peace but if they're not requesting us to come up then just stay back and make sure that uh everything's good all right before the main subject is already cleared the scene all right before, just go ahead and make contact with the uh, after Dwayne actually left the front of the house he walked down the driveway and a slew of reporters were watching him and filming him, including someone that he was with. And they asked him why he was there, to which Dwayne said they should know why he was there. He does catch fugitives. And then he told people that he is taking tips. He provided a phone number for the tip line. And then he got in his car and drove a little bit down the street. So if we look at the title of the video, Shocking Audio, Brian Laundry's mom calls the cops on dog. When did anyone scream and yell? Where's the shocking part of this? And why are so many people clickbaiting this situation? And just to update you on what's going on with the investigation itself, Brian Enton, who's been covering this, I feel very respectfully had this to say today. Yeah, it is noisy, Adrian. First of all, no signs of Brian Laundry, but let me show you. We're right outside the house, and this is what happens bright and early out here. You have people who come out with megaphones. They get on the megaphones, they point them at the laundry house, and they shout at the parents that they want justice for Gabby. Okay, so the big question is, is it appropriate for people to make such a giant fuss out front of this home with neighbors and it being a public space? Turns out in Florida, from what I've read at least, perfectly legal for people to do this as long as they're not breaching the peace. I guess we're going to have to keep our eyes on the situation to find out what happens. Next up, a very interesting thing's happened with a popular country singer named Ryan Upchurch. He had this to say about the Gabby Petito case and he makes some good points. So I'm sitting here watching all this stuff about Gabby Petito. I've been watching it for a few days now and, you know, kind of seeing what people are saying, reading comments, you know all the jazz on social media. And what I've noticed is people have gone from looking for someone to putting out false information about this person and this situation. The mass amount of social media posts of people saying, oh, I think I seen Brian Laundry over here in Colorado. Oh, I seen Brian Laundry in North Carolina. Oh, I seen Brian Laundry in fucking Florida. Oh, I seen Brian Laundry on Venus. Conspiracy theories. I seen a video that said Brian Laundry found. He makes a stand against theories involving this case as disrespectful when people are doing it for views you know the sensationalism as opposed to finding a result for things right well then he does this video nine hours ago and a lot of people are talking about how he's not getting enough sleep or something but i just you just tell me what you think listen listen this is some real deal information probably it could be so i'm putting it out here apparently this was posted on brian laundry's story okay now listen i don't know if he's on there or if it's somebody else, but I am going to say this, whoever took this story is standing up and obviously there's a TV in front of him that's off because you can see the reflection in the background. But watch this. When you move in, click this, pull it down. Wait. Oh, okay. Pull it down. Dude. Plain as day. Ear, eyeball, eyeball, nose, mouth, dark eyebrows, and he has hair. There's dude's ear. He has some big ass ears. I don't know, man. So then I started looking up vehicles that have like wood grain and old CRT TVs in them. And I found something that's similar, you know, make and model. This is a used 1994 Itasca by Winnebago. And if you notice, look. It's at a slightly bit different angle. I'm not saying this is the person, but I'm saying this is the kind of vehicle. Look, rearview mirror, here's that glare that you've seen because they were standing on the other side, so the glare would have been, you know, a little closer to the corner right here from the door being open. See, look at this. So after doing some looking, I found out, you know, where the family who was vlogging and seen his van, I found where that was, and then I found where the area where her body was found. All right, so check this out. Grand Teton National Park, here's where it was found. But if you zoom in, and go right down the road, 50 motherfucking feet. Here's a bunch of fucking RVs camping. Okay, you get my point there. Well, let's take a look at what he did five hours ago. Yeah, that's extremely far away to be tagged in the same thing as Grand Teton National Park. 
From point A to point B is 10 hours and 45 minutes in a car, 655 miles. All right, so look, I went on Instagram and I did hashtag Grand Teton or however you say it, National Park. And I scrolled through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pictures. So I started screenshotting a lot of shit that looked odd to me. Anything that was like in the same area, same time frame, anything from like September 5th to September 11th. So then I'm looking through the top post of hashtag Grand Teton National Park and I see a picture that shows up in the top post, but it, now it doesn't say that. It says it's tagged the Grand Canyon, which is 10 hours away. Okay. But look a at big the part. date at the bottom of the picture. Okay. But if you go to the timeline that everybody's been drawing out, there's a gap between September 1st and September 11th. September 1st, Brian returns home. September 11th, Gabby reported missing. So the same profile that I found under the Grand Teton National Park hashtags, the top hashtags, that had the Grand Canyon that is almost 11 hours away tagged in their picture, also posted a picture saying that they were in Antelope Canyon. Oh my goodness. Guess when? September 11th. Oh heavens. The same day Gabby Petito was reported missing. Now, do you remember the video that surfaced that said Brian went live and he was on a boat. Another rumor floating around that he yeah, appeared on, on Instagram TikTok. Live accidentally for two to three seconds and viewers saw water as if he were on a boat. And that's the real reason why the FBI called off the investigation in the Florida oh, come on. Wildlife they didn't, Refuge. Though. Now, hold They're on, still there. hold on. Let me show you what Antelope Canyon looks like. This is Antelope Canyon. I'm not going to go through the whole thing because he gets really far out there. But then he gets angry two hours ago and he posts this. All right. You mother think I'm crazy after this, something's wrong with y'all. So remember earlier when I took the face out of the TV screen inside the RV and I matched it? Why does it look like he's at a, uh, He's getting his hair cut? He's wearing one of those things that the barber put on you before they cut your hair. With another guy's <laughs> face that I went searching for under the hashtag of Grand Tino National Park. Yeah, you remember that, asshole? Do you um, remember yeah. how far I, away Grand Tino National what did Park I do? was from the Grand Canyon? 10 f***ing hours, right? Yeah, asshole. Grand Canyon Come National on, Ryan, Park. Chill. <laughs> which is where I got that picture from of the guy and matched it to the RV face, is only five hours and 59 minutes away from Yucca Valley, California. Well, guess what happened in Yucca Valley, I don't California know. What on happened June in 28th? Yucca? This is Lauren Cho. Lauren Cho was last seen on June 28th, walking away from her home she had been staying at in Yucca Valley, California. This is Lauren Cho. So when I looked at that weird Instagram this morning that had a hashtag and it was tagging the Grand Canyon for no fucking reason, and I matched a face to what I seen in the TV screen. Everybody's like, oh, no, you should go to fucking bed. Well, good thing I fucking did. I just showed y'all the male's face this morning. I'm not going any further. Please tell me what you think in the comments section about Ryan Upchurch. Maybe go watch his stuff. Tell me if you think he's losing it or if he's on to something. What's ironic is that he did a video talking about how we shouldn't do this kind of stuff. And then within a day, he's doing this. I just wanted to update you. Maybe I'll do some more on it. Depends on what Ryan uploads. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Peace.